back to the GSL Super Tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and nerd ballers. <laughs> I just wanted to use that term. I never used the term nerd baller on cast before, but it's a term that's becoming popular, and there are some nerd ballers out there. The best is one of them. I want to, you know, I know we've got an awesome game coming up next with Marine King, but I want to talk a little bit about that last game. The reason why you can do stuff like that awesomely in StarCraft 2, and a lot of people, a lot of Zerg players might say, well, it's not that awesome, um, is because mules and Thors exist. Without the Thor, the one strong unit that you can keep alive, it's like a hero unit almost. None of that would have been possible. The Banshees, of course, came into play. But the biggest reason why that was able to work was because of the mule. Without the mule, he would not have had enough economy to keep making those Banshees. He brought all his SCVs. He had like two SCVs at home, and then the mule just killed them. So, it was kind of a weird situation. I felt like if Min had kept his mutas at home and took out the dropship that Thor was in, it would have been kind of risky. But if he could have sniped that dropship, the Thor wouldn't have been able to lift. And then all those Erglings would, of course, eventually uh, clean up that Thor. So, that was an intense game. Alright, we're going to do our little player introductions here. DSL Revival. Ranked 62nd of the GSL here. Currently in Code B, did not make it. Um, he lost in the round of 32 last season. Unfortunately, he did take out OGS and Snare and Hong and Prime, both of them 2 0 victories. Shows us some awesome Burrowed Roach timings against Hong and Hong and a very predictable player these days, so was able to crush through his strategy, basically blind countering it two games in a row. So he's taken out some Code S players in the way here on the Super Tournament, but he himself is, of course, not even in Code A, so there are a lot of players like that here at the Super Tournament. I feel like this guy is one that you will see a lot more of. Unlike players like the best, where I said if you if he loses, you might not see him for a while. I think this guy you definitely will. Now his opponent is he is actually going to be shown now. There he is, the king of Marines. For those of you guys who didn't know, he was playing today. His GSL ranking is four. You know why? Because he is a big time runner up. He has been a runner up several times getting smacked down by MVP both times, but this time MVP is already out. So can he himself make it to the finals and take the finals this time? He said in interviews he plans to take away his title of being the Silver King. He wants to win this this time. He took out Ace and Squirrel, two good Proasses on his way here. But uh, taking out Proasses isn't gonna count for much when you're playing against a Zerg player like Revival. Now remember also, as matches further than this go, there's only one more Pros in this tournament, Alicia, and he may never even have to face him. So his matchup, his, his Terra versus uh, Pros was kind of weak in the past, but now he's been showing it very strongly. And in fact, here, let's take a look at some of those results. You can see some of those Pros he's beaten. Now, Revival versus Terran recently, he's got a pretty good win rate, 66.7. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Marine King, of course, 83.3%, though, puts it to shame. Not only that, but I mean, it's 2 to 1 is 67, so that's not that many games. 10 to 2 in recent games, though, from Marine King versus Zerg. He's won 83.3%. That is a pretty ridiculous win rate. So, I think that Marine King has got a pretty good advantage here. He's definitely the favorite to win this game. Revival may be able to take some games off of him, may be able to win the series, but it's not going to be easy. He's going to have to roll up his sleeves. Look at him there. Roll up his sleeves. He's got to get ready. The maps are going to be Taldarim Altar, Crevasse, and Zelnaga Caverns. Now, Terminus Re and Belcher Beach for the maps eliminated here. Interesting that a Zerg player would eliminate Terminus Re. Maybe he doesn't feel comfortable against Marine King's late games. So he wants to eliminate that. Now, Belcher Beach is a map that Terrans have historically done badly on. And Zergs have historically done well on. And, it's, you know, there's not a lot of history behind it. It hasn't been out that long. But uh, I think it was a smart choice from Marine King to eliminate that map. Terrans do kind of struggle there. The countdown has started. Who's going to take game one? Will it be TSL Revival or will it be Marine King, the favorite to win this series? We're going to find out. The map is Taldarium Altar. I am Wolf. This is the GSL, and we are in the round of 16. Which one of these players will advance to the round of eight? DSL Revival versus Marine King Prime Week. All right, down here at the bottom left, we have a player on the team TSL. One of the last ones, if not the last one, left in this tournament. Can he make a TSL Revival? Talk more about that later about TSL. His opponent at the top position here needs little introduction. 
He is known as the King of Marines, or said differently, he is... Marine King Prime Wei. Got a lot of fans in the audience screaming and cheering him on. There's a girl in here that always comes and cheers him on. I see her in here. It's always good to have fans. And uh, it's always good to be a fan, too. Remember that LG Cinema 3D, Intel, and G Skill are responsible for making this awesome tournament happen. Now, this is a pretty huge map. So most likely, we're going to see pretty macro-oriented styles from these two players. We're not going to see anything like we saw from the best. I mean, we could. It's very unlikely. Well, obviously, we're not really going to see anything like we saw from the best because... He hasn't taken any gases yet, and it looks like he's actually going to go for a command center first. He's pulling a lot of minerals, going for 14 CC, like we saw. He's actually going to wall off with it rather than placing at the front, which is pretty smart. Sometimes you can just lose games if you don't. Now, Hatchery first does go down for Revival as well, and to pool, of course. Pretty normal Zerg versus Terran build on this map. The command center first isn't that normal. You don't see that very often but it's becoming more and more common as Terrans are kind of figuring out how to do it. So it's going to take Revival a little while to scout. Actually, he's scouting cross positions first. No, actually, that's a super fast drone scout. He sent his drone scout out really fast. So he's actually going to see his opponent right away here, which is going to be really helpful for him to know. That means he can drone like a madman when he sees this. Alternately, he could be really aggressive and try to punish him for doing this, but most likely he's just going to drone like a madman. He may actually kill this SCV. Just barely doesn't. SCV was repaired there. And the drone has to leave. SCV is looking out for each other, repairing each other. Always good to see. Double gas is going up immediately for Marine King. Even before he got his orbital made. Pretty normal timing on that though when you go for this type of super fast command center. Now... I was going to say, what are we going to see Revival do? He made a Roach Warrant. Now, if I remember correctly, he actually put, when he played against Ensnare, when Ensnare did a really fast expand, but it was a gasless expand, it wasn't a, a fast expand this fast. But he made a Roach Warrant and immediately put on pressure with the Roaches before the Siege Tanks were out and did a lot of damage. Now, we could see him do something like this again. No Survival hasn't even transferred his drones over there. He's not making any more drones. I think he's going to make like five Roaches and attack Marine King, and when Marine King doesn't have that many units, if Marine King isn't prepared, if he doesn't have a bunker, it's going to be very difficult for him to deal with this. Even if he does have a bunker, it's going to be difficult. You know why? Because he's making a reactor right now on that barracks. That means he's not going to have any Marines out, minus the one that he made initially. He's not going to have any additional Marines out to deal with this. When that reactor finishes, he's going to switch. That means even less Marines coming out. And if you've got Hellions, reactor Hellions coming out, when like five Roaches hit your base, you hit your first two Hellions come out, that's not something you want to have happen. You actually can't beat the Roaches and oh, he's going to get totally blocked here. Well, that could have gone a lot better for Revival. But that's, is that a wall off? No, it's not. That was, Revival could have actually taken so much more advantage of that situation than he did. Does kill one Marine and even gets the STB he's still inside of here. Bunker going down here for Marine King. Does he realize what's happening? I'm not sure he does. The barracks will land. Two Hellions will come out. But is he going to even have any units to put inside of the bunker? The Hellions are going to try to buy him time. But if the Hellions get put back up against the wall, of course, they're not going to be able to out-micro these Roaches. Revival should just ignore those Hellions for now. And indeed he will, at least until he gets to the wall. Two more Roaches, remember, are following this up. He's going to want to target down this bunker before it finishes, but it is going to finish. And he does catch those Hellions. Oh, could have killed them, but decided not to. He wants to go for the bunker instead. Now he's kind of in a tough spot. He doesn't really want to target down that bunker, at least he shouldn't. It's kind of weird that he's going to go for it. Because his SCV is repairing and he just doesn't have enough DPS to do that. A little bit indecisive there by Revival. Banshee is on the way and that's really going to start mopping things up here. Marine King does repair everything. Leaves those SCVs there just in case. And basically, Revival is, is kind of going all in with this. Oh, he lifted at the worst possible time and here come the Roaches! And the Zerglings are coming in here, and uh-oh, Marine King is in trouble now. That's the last thing he should have done, lifting at that moment. I know he wanted to get Siege Tanks out, but did he want it that badly? I don't think so, and the bunker does fall, and now there are tons of roaches in here. The Marines will fall. Zergling is coming in as well, and I think Marine King is going to die. The Banshee will come out, and when the Banshee comes out, that's going to be very helpful. But she has got a long way to come. And all of the SCVs, in fact, all of them but six of the SCVs are dead. 
So even if the Banshee comes out and holds this, Revival, he hasn't really gone all in with this. He was going almost all in to where, it, I mean, he, he made so many roaches that it was almost all in, but he actually has started droning back at home behind this. He's got his natural up and running. And so he's just going to be way ahead from here. And he wanted to target down that tech lab, but uh, decided to go and shoot at the supply depot instead. May get a few more of these SCVs. And indeed, he will. Right now, it's 41 drones to 4 SCVs. After Revival realized he was going to do a ton of damage, he just stopped making roaches entirely and made only SCVs. I mean, uh, drones. If he started making only SCVs, he would be cheating. Alright, so... Marine King does have two command centers. He's got the ability to drop double mules, and he can make twice as many uh, SCVs as he would normally if he didn't have that. So that's going to be pretty useful. He even has this Banshee, which can help him a lot. But there's no denying that he is extremely behind. It's like the extreme games, except it's how far Revival is. It's that extreme. It's like if Revival like Revival uh, doesn't win this game, he's just going to get up and go like snowboard and skateboard and go on a half pipe and stuff. Remember that spore crawler there is going to be quite deadly. Marine King has to be very careful. He's not researching cloak. Just wanted to get those banshees out. He just doesn't have the economy to support cloak. So a little bit rough for him to try to get that. He's going to try to make a third command here. That's actually pretty smart. I like that. It's a risk he's going to have to take in order to really come back here. It's going to allow him to build more SCVs, and of course, it's going to get, get pretty good saturation once he gets that SCV count up. And additionally, more mules. Nice banshee control here. Revival only has one queen, now the second queen joins in. And he doesn't have enough for transfuse, so unfortunately that queen will fall. But there's another one joining in. 71 supply right now for Revival to 38 supply of Marine King. He's catching up relatively quickly, but... 52 drones to 15 SCVs, that's the real story here. Sacks an Overlord to see what's going on. He sees there's not a whole lot going on. He's not going to be able to see that third command center. Actually, I take it back, does the Overlord on the edge see it? I'm going to check that. He does, in fact, see that command center. So that's one small victory for... Or well, actually, that's a one big victory for Revival. One small problem for Marine King. The Spore Crawler has been repositioned nicely. Now, remember that Revival hasn't actually made a third base yet. So he's not as ahead as he could be. He's just making a ton of drones right now. He's actually fully saturated. These Queens should have enough for a Transfuse. Doesn't do it though. Oh, it's the wrong queen that had enough energy, that's why. And that Banshee most likely will be thwarted. Yeah, Banshee gotta get out of there. So three commanders up from Marine King. He's gonna make three SCVs at a time. And with three orbital commands dropping mules, it's basically like having a two-base economy. <laughs> that's basically what it's like. You don't have the gas, but here's the thing though. Revival, he's got mutas coming out, he's got seven mutas out. He's making that third hatchery now that he's getting a little aggressive, and there's no real easy way for Marine King to take that third base. He's even going to make Banelings up here. And Marine King just doesn't have the army. He took some risks, like I said, to try to get his economy back up, and his economy is basically the same as Revival's right now. But it's just not going to be enough if uh, if that economy just hasn't really come full swing yet. He doesn't have enough units. Goodbye, Viking. And Revival is going to run in with these Banelings here pretty soon. Remember, this is a pretty tight wall off for Marine King. There's no weak spot in this wall off. The reactor and the tech lab are hidden back behind the barracks in the factory. And of course, the command center has 1,500 hit points. That's not going to be an easy target to destroy. Even if he doesn't attack here, though, he's buying, or, you know, he's getting that third base up, and Marine King is just losing time, essentially, as this goes on. Now he's just going to target what he can with these mutas, trying to avoid Marine fire. Stim is not done, it's only halfway done, and here he goes! Actually, he found that there was an opening, so there was a weak spot after all, and this may be it. There are just too many banelings. That hole in the wall may have sealed the deal. The tanks are going to get cleaned up by Mutas. Even more banelings trying to roll in. SCV is going down very quickly. There's only two Marines left, and a third one. The Mules drop, and the GG is said. Revival takes game one with some awesome Roach aggression, reacting to what his opponent was doing. Took that win. Breathes a sigh of relief. Marine King can't be happy with how that game turned out, but I'm sure he realizes that's not really indicative of how the series may go. He did a very risky build. He went CC first and then made like no units and then went right into reactor hellions. 
which is a build that Marine King actually does a lot of the time when I've cast and play in other events other than the GSL as well as the GSL. He tends to do that a lot. And I think Revival just said, oh, I think you're going to do this again. And he scouted, he saw you went for a reactor. I will punish you. And then he did. Punished him, he did. Banelings would have done almost just as well. Um, but he decided to go for Roaches. Knowing that the Hellions were really his big opposition, he wasn't going to be dealing with any tanks. And he crushed through. Took a game off Marine King. Can he take another one, though? Marine King looking a little bit disappointed with uh, with how the game went for him, though. I have to say, his mindset probably a little bit affected by how that turned out. Alright, so the next map is going to be Crevasse. TSL Revival versus Marine King Prime Lee. Crevasse, another map where we may see Marine King try to go for a fast command center. It is a very obviously uh, easy to do map. I've talked about it over and over and over again. If you guys don't know by now, you have been ignoring me. <laughs> it's easy to take a fast command center because there's a backdoor expansion. Sometimes though, you can be extremely aggressive, do something cheesy, go for gas first or something like that. Gas first isn't cheesy, but I mean, there are options. You can go for gas first, you could do proxy barracks, something like that, catch your opponent off guard because he's gonna be expecting you to go for a macro build. And we're gonna rejoin the map. Something happened in the game, so we'll just wait patiently, guys. The game will be starting pretty soon. Just joining a new lobby. Anyway, the map is still crevasse as far as I know. Yeah, it is. It Maybe the wrong version loaded up. But Marine King, he's got his work cut out for him now because even if he wins this game, he still has to win two games, and Revival shows some awesome aggression. Marine King can't just sit back and play his aggressive style, his aggressive macro style, his aggressive teching, like teching and fastest man at the same time. A little bit difficult, so, you know, he's he's kind of, his mindset is affected. He, I think he's in the mindset before, I can crush this guy, it's going to be easy, my Terran versus Zerg is awesome, and then he loses the first game after trying to play something risky. His mindset is definitely going to be affected. Okay, so they're, the players actually are having some lag, both of them. Um, so they're actually just going to relog right now. So both of them did complain they're having a lot of lag in that game, so they're just going to relog. So we're just going to sit here while they do that. I'm going to tell you guys about Crevasse. So there are a lot of different options. Um, now what I think Revival might try to do is, well, he's going to scout, of course, what his opponent's doing. I think he's going to most likely go for a hatchery first. Now if he wants to, he can put on that same kind of aggression if his opponent goes for the same type of build, but he may want to go for Banelings instead. Remember the ramp is really wide open if you bust through. The, the rocks take the Banelings splash damage as well, so the rocks may end up falling and then Speedlings can run in later. So Baneling aggression is pretty common on this map. If you see someone like Marine King doing something extremely risky, we may see something like that. Um, or we may see just a long game out of these guys, which is what I expected to see from the first place. But Revival, he's shown us he's not afraid to pull out the roaches. He did it against Ensnare. He's doing it against Marine King. And uh, the players are actually now in the game. It's not Marine King Prime. It's Marine... Er, it's, oh, it's Marine King Prime, not Marine Kong Prime. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly. Um, maybe he thought that some people were saying his name wrong. But... Uh, Anyway, the players are in the game now. We're going to get started here pretty soon. You can follow me, by the way, on FXO Wolf on Twitter. You can follow GOM TV at GOM TV. And, uh, of course, you can follow StarCraft on Twitter at StarCraft. Uh, or maybe StarCraft 2. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just StarCraft. If you're a Blizzard fan, you want to follow StarCraft on Twitter. The countdown has started, so we're going to jump right into that game here in just a minute. All right. Here we go. Game 2 is going to be on Crevasse. Who's going to take it? Will it be Revival or will it be Marine King? Let's find out. 